Hi guys, Dave here, and you probably heard the story what was the VHS versus Betamax fight at the time in the 1880s of Thomas Alva Edison's direct current and George Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla's alternating current. One would win, one would become the standard for electricity, and that standard was, as we know for our grid, from our grid, alternating current. Why did the grid become alternating current? Because Alternating current is easier to transport. And why is it easier to transport? It's easy through simple induction to transform from lower voltages to higher voltage, at which point it can be transported. At the time, you couldn't do that with DC current. Now you can. Some other advantages we're going to see for DC current now are what are going to give our man Edison here the last laugh. So solar panels run on DC power and solar panel prices have been coming down precipitously. Every time the number of panels doubles, the cost comes down by 20%. And you could say, how often does that happen, Dave? It happens every couple of years. There's an explosion of the number of solar panels that are being installed worldwide. And in fact, by the end of 2025, the wholesale cost per watt is supposed to be only 10 cents per watt. So you can imagine for a five kilowatt system, which would be an average or maybe small house, eight, eight kilowatt system, we'll say, $800 worth of solar panels. So it's not free yet, but it's, it's, it's getting pretty close. It's heading in that direction, right? I mean, they still need to be installed, et cetera, et cetera. But price is coming down to the point where now, because so much solar is being produced, states like California, for instance, they don't want to buy it back anymore. As of April last year, they have something called net metering 3.0. You have to push up four kilowatt hours to get a credit back of one kilowatt hour. Okay, that's net metering 3.0. Used to be one for one. Net metering historically was always you push, push up one kilowatt hour, say when you're at home, when you're working during the day. When you get home, you get to use that kilowatt hour that the grid used earlier, get a credit for it to use at night. Now, four for one, lousy return, but the cost of batteries is also coming down precipitously. Okay, this here is, shows a curve for lithium ion batteries. Not the safest batteries, you probably heard of explosions with lithium ion batteries, but I get lithium iron phosphate batteries coming down almost to the same extent, and those are what are found in home storage systems, or most home storage systems. So you see here, this is a potential DC nanogrid. You have DC power solar coming in from the solar panels. You have a lithium iron phosphate battery here. Optionally, you may or may not want to take in grid power to store this store in this battery when there isn't any solar, or you may want to be totally island off grid. If you have enough panel, enough battery, you can do that. Or there may be times when you actually want to sell your power back to the grid, back when they're more desperate. Like if they don't, they don't want to turn on the next plant, next peaker plant, because that's very expensive for them when there's a high demand for power. So instead they may say, okay, we'll buy your power right now and you can sell it back to them at a favorable rate from your perspective. Meanwhile, you can buy it from them at a rate in the middle of the night, maybe when it's cheap. Okay, this right here is um, hybrid inverter right now. That could be your controller for your DC bus. Takes, can take in DC power from solar panels, can take in alternating current. It can put out alternating current to run your house. It can put out some DC for different devices in your house. In the future, these are going to become more complex. They're going to have more devices to be allowed to be hooked up natively DC. So you see on the left here, computers, phones, your television set, all of them run inherently on DC power. And this box right here is attached to all of them. It's rectifying the alternating current to DC. Feels a little bit warm, losing a little bit of power here. You won't be losing any of that power in the future because you're gonna be running natively on DC. Okay, same way with LED lights. 
they should be running, they run happier off of DC power. The LED lights you buy at the store and plug into your standard electric outlet, they have a little device, again, to convert alternating current to direct current. And they, as long as LD, LED lights last, they last even longer if they didn't have to have that device and they could just run natively or they're happiest off of DC power. Some things like drills and blenders run off of universal power. They can run off of DC or AC. Toasters, resistive load type appliances can run off of either. Now some things are coming out like DC powered heat pumps, DC powered refrigerators. Okay, they have DC compressors and DC fan motors in them. And with that, they're running a lot more efficiently. They cost a lot less to run because you don't constantly have that inrush current where you can kind of almost feel it when a normal air conditioner turns on. <clears throat> that inrush current is four to six times more power than the running current. And it's a total waste and not needed when you have these variable speed compressors now available in a lot of heat pumps and refrigerators. Okay, and then going, this goes from left to right of what eats the most amount of power. EVs a lot of, need a lot of power. And so EVs right now, if you're plugging it into your home, uh, it's alternating current. And that alternating current needs to be rectified within the car. In the future, I was just at the solar show last week, a lot of dedication to developing native DC chargers. And so, a lot of people working to get off-grid. This lady from Ambition uh, Strike, she has a YouTube site. A lot of YouTubers telling their story of how and why they went off-grid. Some doing to save power, some to live wherever they want. Homesteaders, different reasons. Meanwhile, there are 745 million people that don't have any power in certain parts of the world. DC power, DC solar panels. They're the future for them. Some places like India have grid power, not exactly reliable. So this is gonna be a way for those people as well to have more reliable and better power. So yeah, it's probably would bring a smile to Edison's face, bring a smile to a lot of people's face in the future. Utilities, probably some of them will smile if they can not have to run peaker plants. They might, might not be as happy if you're running your own plant because you're not going to be buying as much alternating current from them. And in the future also, there might be an opportunity where you, where you can actually trade power or sell power to your neighbors, right? And that can all be, again, negotiated with some complex algorithms and electronics which aren't readily available yet, but coming soon. So if you like this video, we talk about new energy, renewable energy. This, this is by Airspool, where we actually make a solar powered heat pump. So that was in effect what was shown in the last page here. Subscribe to the Airspool channel and we'll keep the dialogue going. Thanks for your time.